Hi everyone, Marcus Mods here, and today we're going to look at how to use a non-latching Panasonic TQ series relay. These parts are commonly used in guitar effects pedals and other small signal electronics. These are basically just electrically controlled analog switches, so you can route your signal using an electrical current. There will be three parts to today's video. The first one is going to be a short overview for people with some background in electronics. Then we'll go into the theory behind this relay, and then we'll go into a demonstration on how to put it all together. The parts and resources that I'm using are linked in the description. If you feel like building along at home, please consider using the links. Some of them are affiliate links, which really help support the channel. Alright, now let's get into the video. For those of you who are like me, and are slightly impatient and have a background in electronics, here's a schematic for the circuit. This can also be downloaded in the links below. When you get it all put together, it should look like this. Then we can take our single pole switch and flip it, and it will actuate our TQ series relay. And that's all there is to it. Now we'll go ahead and get into the technical details behind the relay. In simplest terms, this relay is just an analog switch controlled by a magnetic coil. When you pass a voltage across the coil, it actuates the switch, flipping it from the off to the on position. The relay that I'm using is non-latching, meaning that the switch only stays in the on position as long as the voltage is applied across the coil. In latching switches, the switch stays on even after your voltage difference is removed across the coil. Latching switches won't be discussed in today's video. To understand how our non-latching switch works, let's look at the pinout of the relay. You can find the pinout on page 12 of the datasheet. For some reason, Panasonic provided the pinout as if you're looking at the bottom of the chip, so that's how we'll look at it. Starting at pin 1, we have the positive power terminal. Pin 2 is then the output for side 1 when the switch is in the off position, meaning there's no voltage applied across the coil. Pin 3 is the common pin for side 1. Pin 4 is the output in the on position. Pin 5 and 6 aren't connected, so they don't really do anything. Pin 7 is the output for side 2 in the on position. Pin 8 is the common for side 2. Pin 9 is the output for side 2 in the off position. And pin 10 is the negative power terminal. Now we can figure out a test circuit that meets our switch specs. But first we need to understand our switch specs, which starts with looking at the parts number. We can find the parts number for our switch by looking at the ordering information section on page 2 of the datasheet. The important ones to note here are the terminal shape, which tells if your part is through hole or surface mount, the operating function, which shows if your part is non-latching, single side latching, or two coil latching, and then rated coil voltage, which shows the required voltage to operate your switch. In this case, I'm using a TQ2H-5V, which means my switch has crimped through hole terminals, is non-latching, and operates at a 5 volt coil voltage. If we scroll to page 4, we can find the operating parameters for our switch. We'll need a voltage drop across the coil that's at least 75% of the rated voltage, but not beyond 150% of the rated voltage. We'll also need a current close to the recommended operating current. In this case, we're starting with a 9 volt power supply. And we can see from the datasheet that a single side stable 5 volt switch has a coil resistance of 178 ohms. By doing a simple voltage divider, I've linked to a voltage divider calculator in the description, we can find that a 150 ohm resistor gives the required 5 volt drop across the coil. It also gives roughly 30 milliamps of current, which means we're almost matching the spec sheet exactly. Alright, now that we've got an understanding of how our circuit works, we will go ahead and start putting it on the circuit board. So the first thing we need to do is supply power to our board. In this case, we're using a barrel jack. The long lead on this is positive, and the short lead is negative. Also, red is positive, black is negative. So we'll go ahead and connect that to our board, connecting the black lead to the blue rail on our board, and then we'll go ahead and connect the red lead to the red rail on our board. From there, we'll need to get power to our board. 
I'm using a Boss PSA120 power adapter. This is pretty standard in guitar pedals. So we'll go ahead and plug that right into our barrel jack. After we get that plugged in, we need to jump our power across our board. So this is that we have our positive and negative voltage on either side of the board. So we'll start by connecting blue to blue. That'll connect ground on one side to ground on the other. And then go ahead and do red to red. That'll give your plus 9 volts on either side of the board. After that, we need to go ahead and add our switch. In this case, we're using a single pull, single throw switch. So it's got three connections, one in the middle, which is common, and then two on the outside, which are going to be your outputs. And you can tell which output your common pin is connected to by looking at the toggle on your switch. The toggle will point to the output that your common is connected to. So we'll go ahead and get that on the board. From there, we need to connect that common pin on our toggle switch, which is the center, to the 9 volt rail on our board. Also, if your switch isn't flipped into the like, right hand position, go ahead and do that just so your circuit starts in the off position. After we get power to our switch, we'll add the 150 ohm resistor. So connect this to the right hand lead on your switch and then to another row of inputs on your board. This is going to be the basis for our voltage divider once we get our relay added to the board. Next is our relay. You can see it's really not one to focus, but there should be a little white line on the left hand side of that relay, and that's going to indicate pins 1 and 10 on our relay. So we'll go ahead and pop that relay in the board. Then, in accordance with our schematic, we need to go ahead and connect pin 1 of the relay, or sorry, pin 10 of the relay to ground. Now we need to put in our reverse protection diode. This is our 1N4148. You'll see a little black mark on the left hand side of that diode. That needs to be connected to pin 1, and then connect the other end to pin 10. And what this does is it just allows current to flow out of the coil after your switch changes positions. That way there isn't a bunch of current buildup that causes weird, uh, weird behavior in your switch. So we'll go ahead and put in a jumper from the open leg of our 150 ohm resistor to pin 1 of our relay, and that's going to create that 5 volt voltage divider that we need to activate our switch. From there, all we need is our LEDs. Obviously we've got to get power to them somehow. So the first step is going to be taking our two 10K resistors and connecting them from the 9 volt rail on our board to the common pins on our relay. So that's going to be pin 3 and pin 8. Once you've got those resistors in there, to limit the current going to your LEDs, all we have left to do is pop in our LEDs. So here's a green LED that we'll be using. The long leg here is positive, the short leg is negative, and you can also see a little flat side on the LED that helps denote the negative side of the LED. So we'll connect the positive leg to pin 2 on our relay and the negative leg to ground. And you can see, because the switch is in the off position, that our LED lights up because we're connecting an LED to that 10K resistor and ground. Now that we've got both of our green LEDs in that'll show when our switch is in the off position, we need to go ahead and add in blue LEDs that will show when our switch is in the on position. So we're going to do the same thing here, just at different pins on our relay, connect the positive leg to the to output pins on the relay, and then the negative leg to ground. And then we can flip our switch, and we see that the LED color changes, because our switch has flipped from the off to the on position. So it's pretty cool. It's working like it should. We'll run through it a few times to show that it's not a fluke, and then we are good to go. Thank you all for watching. Please like and subscribe. Never stop learning. And remember, make cool sh**.